From the moment of conception, our cells are constantly dividing and changing, and continue to do so throughout life. However, understanding the biology of aging is incredibly difficult. There are numerous factors involved in this complex process that are all interrelated. Aging is an inevitable time-dependent decline in physiological integrity and function of various organ systems caused by the accumulation of cellular damage. This drives a progressive loss of biological function and eventually impairs the function of the entire organism. Aging is a major risk factor for one of the most significant causes of human morbidity and mortality, cancer. Aging occurs as a result of a series of intrinsic processes and their interactions with the external environment, from sunlight, UV radiation, toxins in the air like fumes and tobacco, chemicals in the water, to how much we exercise and the degree of environmental stress, all the way to our diets. DNA gets damaged thousands of times per day, anywhere between 10,000 to a million times. Together, these factors cause changes in the structure of our body's molecules and cells, where DNA undergoes the process of constant damage and repair, accruing errors and imperfect repairs, leading to the accumulation of cellular waste in the body that ultimately leads to the functional decline of the organism. With individuals living longer and longer, aging research has become a huge field of study. More recently, scientists have discovered nine traits that are hallmarks of aging. From altered intercellular communication, deregulated nutrient sensing, stem cell exhaustion, cellular senescence, mitochondrial dysfunction, loss of proteostasis, telomere attrition, epigenetic alterations, and finally genomic instability, which is one of the major players leading to cancer. Let's first take a look at altered cell communication. This involves a gradual and harmful change in chemical signals between cells. This signal degradation impacts on how cells behave as individuals, groups, and the surrounding microenvironment. So cell behavior affects the cell environment and the environment in return affects the cells. As we age, the signaling environment of the chemical messages across the whole body tend to become more chronically inflammatory, inhibiting the immune system and potentially causing other effects like muscle wasting, bone loss, and impaired neurological function, as well as other harmful effects in a process known as inflammatory aging or inflammaging. Multiple different factors cause inflammaging, one of which is the senescence associated security phenotype, SASP, which is directly caused by another hallmark of aging, cellular senescence. As cells replicate, they eventually enter a phase of permanent non division and cell cycle arrest when they run out of replicatable DNA at the chromosome ends. However, it can also occur as a result of damaged chromosomes. Senescent cells normally destroy themselves via a programmed cell death mechanism called apoptosis and are removed by the immune system. But the immune system weakens with age due to chronic inflammation and immunosuppressive environments. Increasing numbers of senescent cells escape this process and begin to accumulate in all tissues of the body. These senescent cells are known to secrete inflammatory, immunosuppressive and a harmful mixture of factors, SASPs, that have been shown to encourage neighboring cells to become senescent and may contribute to multiple age-related diseases. The leakage of chemicals from senescent cells can move into neighboring cells through the gap junctions, the holes between the cell surfaces. When cells are damaged, inflammation kicks in to trigger a repair process. But in this dysregulated state, repairs fail and damage accumulates, causing more inflammation. To maintain homeostasis, these cells need to be replaced by healthy ones, and this function declines with age. Eventually, the number of damaged and senescent cells reaches a point where the tissue or organ function is compromised. In order to carry out normal cell processes, cells employ different nutrients within the body, for example, glucose, amino acids, and lipids. Cells have an ability to sense when nutrients are present, and these signals tell the cell when it is safe to promote the consumption of nutrients. When nutrients are scarce, evolution focuses on conservation, maintenance, and repair, rather than growth and replication. Cells basically monitor the nutrient availability so that they can regulate their activity to balance growth, stress, and the damage that occurs. 
Nutrient availability becomes deregulated in aging, and nutrient supplies inevitably decline, ultimately affecting cellular function. Our body's natural ability to regenerate tissue and organs, and repair cell damage, depends on the availability of healthy stem cells. This capacity declines with age, and they become unable to carry out these processes due to exhaustion. Stem cells are also affected by other age-related issues like chronic inflammation and DNA damage over time, which can inhibit their ability to replicate and replace defective cells. This leads to diseases like reduced muscle mass, bone fragility, and immunosenescence, where defective cells are not cleared anymore. As stem cells need to replicate often to replenish damaged tissue, they can't afford to lose their DNA or capacity for infinite cell divisions. They possess an enzyme called telomerase that extends their telomeres, the ends of the DNA, when they get shorter. But the rate of telomerase activity is not enough to compensate for the degree of shortening that takes place throughout life, and thus stem cells eventually senesce or die after they reach their natural replicative limit with age. The mitochondria are organelles within cells that are known to be the powerhouse and the main energy source for cellular processes. They have their own genome, which is prone to damage because it is stored in an oxidation-prone location, and they do not possess their own protective nucleus. Thus, they are exposed to all of the elements. Unfortunately, mitochondria also produce the most free radicals, such as reactive oxygen species, as a byproduct of normal cellular metabolism and aerobic respiration. This results in the progressive dysfunction of their cellular processes over time, where they release increasing amounts of free radicals leading to inflammation, stress, and cellular damage. These free radicals damage all molecules they encounter, from proteins to DNA, causing them to mutate and thereby dysregulating their function. Dysfunctional mitochondria produce less ATP, reducing the energy supply needed for cellular processes. They are also unable to replace themselves as quickly in their dysfunctional state. The reduced numbers of mitochondria and failure to dispose of defective mitochondria further lead to cellular damage and eventually aging. Proteins regulate virtually all cellular reactions and processes and provide cell structure. The maintenance of all proteins in their original form, folded in precise, complex conformations and in abundance, is essential for them to perform their functions optimally. However, with age, proteins are damaged by declining cellular processes. Changes to cellular pH, oxidative processes, or environmental stress can create aberrant protein changes, causing them to misfold and provide inaccurate instructions. They can also form unwanted bonds with other proteins by aggregating together and thus become toxic. In an ideal situation, aberrant and misfolded proteins are degraded by cellular machinery responsible for recycling, but aggregations make it hard for this to be achieved. These aggregates form clumps that protect the interior proteins from being broken down and recycled. All cells have lysosomes that are tiny sacs of enzymes inside of the cell that engulf and degrade cellular material. Our ability to maintain this process reduces over time and leads to the accumulation of damaged proteins that cause all sorts of diseases like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, Huntington's and heart disease. We also have a biological clock in our DNA, which has an expiry date. The body is constantly going through cell divisions and every time cells divide, they make a copy of all their DNA as well. DNA is tightly packed into chromosomes. Due to the imperfect nature of DNA replication, the ends of the DNA are often skipped over. Chromosomes have regions at the ends that are protective caps called telomeres, which contain non-essential information of a specific DNA sequence that is repeated thousands of times. The sequence has two purposes. Firstly, it protects the coding regions of the chromosome, preventing them from being damaged or fusing with other chromosomes, and ensures that no genetic information is lost. Secondly, it acts as a clock that controls the number of replications a cell can make. This region gets shorter every time replication occurs. Because this region has a defined length, the cell can no longer divide after this point. This is known as the replication limit. The replication limit of most cells in humans is roughly 50 times. This limit also helps to prevent cancer, which is the opposite problem of uncontrolled replication. When telomeres reach a critically short length, 
Cells sense it and permanently turn off their replication machinery and senesce. An enzyme known as telomerase, which is turned off in most adult cells, can prevent telomere shortening and even restore telomere length. The presence of telomerase is one of the hallmarks of cancer. Thus, telomere attrition limits the number of times our cell can divide, slowly leading to dwindling populations of functional cells. If you think about it, every cell in our body contains the same set of DNA. So what makes them differentiate into different cell types? Gene expression is modified by the addition of epigenetic markers to the DNA, thus changing the patterns of gene expression in the cell, switching on and off the expression of certain genes in the cell as the situation demands. This is known as the epigenome and can be modified by diet, other lifestyle factors and pharmaceuticals, but most importantly the cellular environment. It also changes as you age. As our cells are exposed to more microenvironmental and environmental factors, these chemical modification tags are lost, added inappropriately or shifted around. And these changes accumulate over time and have been correlated with a decline or alterations in function observed in aging. In aging, as the environment becomes more inflammatory, with various inhibitory molecules released from injured and stressed cells, the feedback loop leads to more and more epigenetic alterations in the genome, ultimately changing the function of the cells. The cells in our body contain all the instructions needed to create proteins that are required to maintain the body structure and function. However, the genome is under constant attack from both external sources and internal environmental factors. Fortunately, DNA also encodes a number of processes that detect and repair virtually all of this damage. But repair is not perfect, and as we age, DNA repair mechanisms become less effective. So more and more damage from imperfect repairs to our genome accumulates, and the effects of these mutations compound. This changes the function of the cell, and these changes are transferred into each future copy of the cell. Cancer is one result of unrepaired DNA damage or incorrect repairs. While mutations can occur at any point in time, they are probabilistic events, so the longer you live, the more likely that this is to happen. Genomic instability is arguably the biggest driver of aging. Ultimately, it affects the ability of our body to produce essential functional proteins that are needed to carry out various functions. Whether it's facilitating biochemical reactions, maintaining the scaffolding, keeping your cells together, or the cell-to-cell -cell communication, proteins are involved. So accumulation of DNA damage with age affects all of these natural processes. There are clinical trials testing treatments for all of these hallmarks at various stages of development. Only time will tell as to which hallmarks make it to the fountain of youth. It's one of the greatest issues facing society today biological aging. Imagine if there really was an elixir of life that could stop or reverse the aging process. The only certainty in life is death, but with modern medicine, populations are aging and living longer than ever before. Perhaps it's more about improving the quality of life that we live, rather than trying to extend it. If aging is inevitable, should we be able to control our health span? How would this change your progression through life? If you could choose how long you lived and when you died in the future, what would you do? Would you drink from the fountain? <laughs>